what's going on everyone i missed you guys so glad that you're back for all you new viewers what's going on my name is josh and i make motorcycle related content with my access r700 how'd you guys enjoy the holidays it was nice to have a little time off from editing and shooting video and things like that but uh here we are we're back at it and uh there's a little christmas gift to myself i bought a new helmet i am extremely excited about this thing it's my first premium helmet that i've ever bought and let me tell you this first ride is phenomenal so far so first impression so far it is definitely a much quieter helmet than my Biltwell lane splitter that i've been using i'm not going to be knocking that helmet because it is a good helmet i really do like it especially in the summer for all the ventilation that it has but it's a little loud um me personally i think it is and it doesn't have the greatest setup for recording and uh I'm totally slaughtering this, but it essentially doesn't have a way to record audio very well without it sounding very windy, no matter how much effort you put into trying to cut down on wind noise. Kind of lost where I'm at. So, first premium helmet, um, so far, first impressions, it is definitely a lot quieter than my Biltwell Lane Splitter, and I'm not trashing the Biltwell built well lane splitter it is a great helmet i love that helmet it uh it looks great it's under 250 bucks it's ece rated it's great in the summertime for airflow but with that uh it has like no way to shut off your vents in the front to keep things quiet or keep them warm so i've tried everything i've put foam in there i've put duct tape on the inside and although it's helped quite a bit it's still not what I would consider a uh, a quiet or premium helmet in terms of just the quality of the fit and finish. So on to the 1400. I am one of the first people to get it from Mountain Motorsports in Lithia Springs. They have them available. If you call them, you can get them. Um, they officially go on sale January 1st, I believe. Now, I'm not going to go into like a detailed breakdown of the helmet and talk about all the features and things like that. If that's a video that you're looking for, you can click right here and check out Revzilla's review of it. That's actually where I got most of my information from. That being said, I can go over a little bit of the highlights. Right now, I have all the vents closed. The top vent, the two side vents, and the front vent and I feel it here absolutely zero wind. So I have a really good feeling that this is gonna be a great wintertime helmet. Um, the pin lock I have installed right now and it's about 44 degrees today and I have no fogging issues whatsoever. I even have a balaclava on and my breathing has not affected the visor one bit. It has, however, fogged up my glasses quite a few times so I had to slide it down just a little bit. Speaking of glasses fogging up, for those of you that are prescription eyeglass wearers or sunglass wearers, there's plenty of room on the sides to slide your bows in. If you have to move them up or down, you won't have the cheek pads interfere with those at all so that is really great. One of the things that I have come to not like about the helmet so far is the visor button in the center. A few people have talked about how it's going to be a little fiddly to work with gloves on. I can absolutely confirm that. These aren't even my heaviest winter gloves and finding that button in the center, pressing it in, wherever it's at, pressing it in and then getting the visor up. Big pain in the ass, but it does click in really nice and securely and as soon as you do, all the wind noise is gone. In terms of doing head checks, I've got absolutely no buffeting when I turn my head at uh, 60, 65 miles an hour. And with all the vents closed, it, uh, it's pretty warm. There's not much air rushing through, so my head's not really cold, even though it's pretty cold outside. And uh, it's not 
not a very sloppy feeling helmet. It doesn't have any buffeting. But built well, once you get about 55, 60 miles an hour, you'll get a little bit of a head shake until you get to about 70 or 80. But with this, I have yet to have any kind of movement from it, which is really nice. What else can we talk about? It's got a phenomenal fit. I can't compare it to an RF-1200. I never had one. I never tried one on. But I did have a Shoei Quest. And I would say the fitment between that and the Shoei Quest is a lot better. The Quest was a little tight around the crown of my head. And even though the sides were nice on my ears, it still had a little bit of pressure on the ears. So with this one, you can definitely feel that there's more room for your ears. The crown of the head feels like it sits nice and perfect. It's not pressing on the back of my neck at all. Overall, I could just see this being a really great touring helmet. Something you could wear all day and not have a single problem. Let's see how easy it is to actuate the vents while you're riding. Fully opened fully closed halfway in between definitely fully open and I can I can hear that for sure it's not loud but you can hear that the vent is open With full fence open, no real noise or whistle. You can you can hear and tell that they're open, but you can't really have any annoying noises from it. Center vent. Wow, that makes a huge difference. You can definitely feel that right across the top of my head. <laughs> and to be honest with you, it feels good, even though it's cold. It does feel good. I'm not sweating in the helmet. It's not hot with the vents closed. Like I said, it's about 44 degrees outside today and it feels really good. Both with the vents closed and with the vents open. Doesn't take much to close them up. And I can tell that they're closed. And we're back to being a silent helmet. Very nice. So what do you guys think based on the audio today? Should I switch this to be my new vlogging helmet or should I stick with the built well? Let me know in the comments down below. One little fact for you. The Reax Ridge waterproof gloves. I don't think they're actually considered winter gloves, but they're good to about 45, 50 degrees. My fingers are definitely getting cold, but my palms and the uh, centers of my hands still good to go. I can only imagine if you have like heated glove liners and you slide them on underneath these, they would be perfect. They're not bulky. They don't have like a bunch of extra material on the inside of the fingers. So you don't lose very much dexterity, dexterity um, with your controls at all. I typically turn to these anytime it's like under 70 degrees and I try to wear them down to as low of the temperature as possible because I just really like the feel of them. Now to address the question that I'm sure I will be asked, should I get this to replace my RF-1200? That's up to you. If your RF-1200 is kind of ending its you know, life cycle of five to seven years, yeah, I would definitely give this one a shot. It's a phenomenal helmet. So far, I'm loving it. Would I run out and buy one if I just got an RF-1200 like within the last year or two? No, probably not, because I don't think that this is going to be 
such a game-changing helmet in comparison to the 1200. If you remember for so long, the 1200 was like the benchmark for everything. How does it compare to the 1200? So with that, I think this is just kind of a new improvement. Remember that that helmet came out in 2013. So with seven years of experience to improve, you now have the 1400. And a lot of the things that people were talking about in terms of not having enough ventilation, you know, so we listened to. I can tell you firsthand that I feel quite a bit of, of ventilation when I open those vents up. So guys, there you have it. The RF 1400, my first ride review. I am absolutely 100% pleased with it. I could not ask for any more from a premium helmet. Comes in at under $500, has a pin lock included, great ventilation, great noise dampening, quiet in my opinion. Let me know what you think. Drop a comment down below. And until next time, you guys be safe, be a good apple, and I'll catch you on the next one.